Bruchem Aboim. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, last week we, we were in the middle of the lecture on uh, circumcision. This week I'd like to continue from where we left off last week. Uh, again, we're having again ideas about what circumcision are about and what people say. The Svasema says, everything has an essential point that connects it to its roots. The land of Israel is the central point of the earth. The Shabbat is the central point of time. And Mila, circumcision, is the central point of a man's bodily organs. The Alpha Shmoni says, whoever presents his son for circumcision is compared to the high priest who would bring up his mincha, his meal offering, with wine on the altar. And even those who shout out against religious coercion still make sure that their sons receive a circumcision and thereby accept the yoke of sanctity of God. Uh, they may do it for a different reason. Again, most of the secular world does circumcision. It's been many health reasons, but it makes no difference as long as it's done. Again, most of them do it with a, a mole. Uh, again, he's an expert on doing that. From this we see that this mitzvah is something engraved in our blood and our souls. This is one of the wonders which God implanted in our holy nation based on Nakshomi. Now the Gemara, the Talmud in the Durham, 31b, states that the word bris, circumcision, is mentioned 13 times in the book of Bereshit in the portion of Lech Lecha, chapter 17. 13 is the gematria, the numerical value of the word echad, meaning one, since this is an act which unites God with his people. It also evokes mercy on the child because of what we call the Yud Gimel Mido Tarachamim, the 13 attributes of mercy. In addition, it alludes also to the 13 blessings that one receives for performing this mitzvah based on the Kedus Yitzchok. 13 is also the numerical value of the word Ahava, love. And a Jewish boy goes from being an infant to being a man, bar mitzvah, at the age of 13. The Talmud in Shabbat in 103a states, I am as happy with your sayings like one who finds great treasure. This alludes again to Mila, circumcision, but the question is how. This can be compared to a person who is very wealthy and has to work hard to achieve his wealth versus the joy of one who becomes wealthy by finding treasure without any effort. This is what Dovinamela, King David, refers to about finding treasure. But when one gets older, he is already, when, that, when one gets older, he is already circumcised, which is a great treasure for him, based on a part of Yosef. Circumcision is referred to in Hebrew as Brit Mila, the covenant of circumcision. Now, the numerical value of the word Brit is 612, and the eight-day-old male infant has fulfilled the mitzvah of circumcision. And now he has another 612 commandments to complete, to fulfill the Tariag Mitzvahs, the 613 commandments that we were commanded by God. At a circumcision, we designate a chair that we refer to as Kisei Eliyahu, the throne of Elijah. Why Elijah? Elijah? Why not Abraham, who was the first to receive the command from God and performed the mitzvah of circumcision? Elio, the prophet, is known as a symbol of what we call Mesirat Nefesh, giving up one's life for God, and that he put his life on the line many times for the Jewish nation. By calling on Eliyahu, we are alluding to the fact that this child should already be ready to give up his life for his Jewish brethren, based on Roshim Shalufot Hirsch. Now the Zohar, according to Kabbalah, Lechlechah states, that Elio's attendance at a circumcision is a form of rebuke. After all, Elio spoke harshly about God's people, saying to God that they would totally abandon the mitzvah of circumcision. God told them that he would be forced to attend every bris, where he would see and be a witness that Jews do indeed fulfill the mitzvah of milah. God also told him that he would be compelled to bless all those that were in attendance. Elio said to God, and how could he bless the people? After all, when he would look into their faces and see all their sins, he would be compelled to curse them. So God then told Elio that he would forgive the sins of all those participating in the bris before Elio came, so that he would see no sins and would truly be able to bless them. The Menei Yisachar states 
that he had heard the name of a medrash, that Eliyahu agreed to come to all circumcisions with the understanding that he would be given the power to forgive the sins of all those present. God agreed, and therefore anyone who is near the Kisei Eliyahu, the throne of Elijah, that seat, has their sins forgiven. Now the number eight plays an important role in creation. God gave the world seven Noahide laws, and the eighth law was given to Abram. That was bris mila, circumcision. Maral of Prague says that the Torah was given after seven weeks of preparation and elevation, the counting of the Omer, the time between Pesach and Shavuot. And then on the beginning of the eighth week, again, the day of Shavuot, God gave the Jewish nation the Torah on Mount Sinai. Every day has a partner. Sunday has Monday, Tuesday has Wednesday, Thursday has Friday. Every day except Shabbos, the seventh day. So God gave Shabbat the Jewish people as a partner. Eight, something above this world, the Jewish soul. The Jewish nation therefore became the eighth entity, the partner to the seventh entity, which was the Shabbat, based on the Ramban. When the Moel, the person doing the circumcision, is ready to begin the service. He calls out, Kvater, and then the person given the honor of bringing the baby to the circumcision enters, holding the baby. The mole calls out, Baruch Haba, which is, blessed is he who is coming. And the word Haba has a numerical value of eight. The word Kvater and Kvatrin are used to refer to godparents, again, the person who brings the baby in, customarily, this is an honor given to a married couple many times who have not been blessed with children. The woman passes the child to the man who brings the child into the room where the circumcision will take place. After the circumcision, they then return the baby back to its mother. There are opinions that state that the origin of the word kvater is a conjunction of two words, one Ivrit, Hebrew, and the other Yiddish. The word kvater, the first word kavod, honor, which is Hebrew, and tir, which is door in Yiddish, based on a levushe mikhov, stated in the Oral Rafa. The knife that the mole uses to perform the circumcision is called an ismal. This word can be broken up into two words, uz, mal. Then, uz meaning then, and mal you shall circumcise. The word Oz, Aleph Zion, has a numerical value of one and seven, which is eight. The eighth blessing in the Amida, in the standing prayer that we say da daily, is called Rifa'enu, which translates to mean heal us. In this blessing, we ask God Almighty to give us good health and heal us from any sickness or injury. This is an illusion for a speedy recovery for the baby boy who on the eighth day has just had a circumcision. Other allusions to the number eight, Mila was the eighth test out of the ten that Avram was given by God. The word Torah has a numerical value of 611. Six plus one in one is eight. The high priest wore eight garments, eight vestments. There were eight musical instruments that accompanied the Levites as they sang psalms in the temple. There were eight poles that were used to transport the vessels of the Mishkan, the tabernacle, in the desert. Aaron and his sons were inducted into the service of the priesthood on the eighth day of the dedication of the tabernacle. Also, the harp of the Messiah will have eight strings. Now, the number seven is an allusion to things in this lower world. Eight is an allusion to that which is holy and a connection to the upper world. It is also connected to Mashiach, the Messiah, the time when the world will reach its perfection. As we read in the book of Bereshit, in the portion of Lechlecha, chapter 7, verse 1, where God says to Avram Avinu, Abraham our father, Go before me and be perfect, which was a reference to Milah. The Jewish nation that were led into the land of Israel by Yehoshua, were all circumcised by him before they entered. They were the first people to live in the land of Israel as Jews. They were the eighth generation dating from Abraham, from Abram Avinu. Now the Hebrew word for the number eight is Shemona. The Hebrew word for soul is Neshama. 
They both have the exact same letters. This is an allusion to our belief that with the act of circumcision, the baby boy receives his Jewish soul. There were eight ingredients in what we call the Shemen HaMishka, the oil that was for anointing, that was made by Moshe only once and used to anoint the vessels of the Mishkan, the priest, and some kings. It was one of the items that were kept in the Holy of Holies and was hidden with the Ark before the destruction of the First Temple. The Sefer Habihir states that the reason the Torah commands us to do Mila on the eighth day after birth is that man possesses eight extremities, right hand, left hand, right foot, left foot, head, body, male organ, and female organs. As the Torah describes man in the Bereshit in 2.24, as it says he cleaves to his wife so that they become one flesh. When this happens, then all 248 limbs of the body are whole, and that is what the name Avram, Abraham, represents, based on the Shlach Kaddish. There are three people that are considered part of the circumcision, the father, the moel, and the sandik. In fact, when they pray with the minyan, a quorum of ten men, before the bris, they exempt the whole congregation from saying tachnun, the confessional prayer. There are other exceptions that, are, that can occur, such as when a fast day is pushed off until Sunday. A minyan, a quorum of ten men, are not, not necessary for a bris, but it is preferable. At every bris, an individual known as a sandik is designated to hold the child as the mole performs a circumcision. The designation of being a sandik is considered the most prominent honor of the Mila ceremony. The sandik is often referred to as the Baal Habris, the principal participant of the circumcision. Now the word sandik originates from the Greek word santikos, which means companion of the child, or from the word sandikos, patron of the child. The role of the sandik at a circumcision is equated with that of the priest, the Kohen, who offered the daily incense on the altar in the temple. That being the case, a priest, the Kohen, was only allowed to bring this incense offering once, once during his term of service. And so too, the Ramah states it has become customary that one father not honor the same person to act as a sandik. Of the, at the circumcision of two of his sons. Others say that the customs has roots in Kabbalistic teachings. At the bris, there is a custom of naming the child. This is based on the fact that it was in conjunction with the commandment of Mila that God changed Abraham's name to Abraham, Avraham. The name Avraham was much more than an old name with a new letter added to Hay. It symbolized a totally new identity. From the story found in the book of Bereshit, in the portion of Lethalchah 17.5, of God changing the names of both Avraham and Sarah, from Abram and Sarai to Abraham and Sarah, we have a custom that when someone is seriously ill, we add a name to their original name to change their destiny. They then become like a newborn child. Now, based on the Talmud in Arab in 83b, we believe that a person's Hebrew name says something about that person. The Marsha states a parent naming a child does not receive a prophecy. However, God does inspire him or her to select a particular name that has a significance unbeknown to the parent. Many years later, the aptness of the name may become apparent to all. This inspiration is not limited to Jews. Gentiles may be similarly inspired. So the question becomes, what do we learn from the mitzvah of Milah? That man was not created perfect, neither physically nor emotionally. That one must be a partner with God and remove the orla, the negative forces, from his body, but also from his heart. But in addition, the law states that the circumcision must be done without anesthetic. But why? to teach us that from the beginning of life, no pain, no gain. If one wants to be successful in life, one must be willing to push himself, to go past his comfort zone. God, God challenges every individual to remove their blemishes 
to face and acknowledge their weaknesses and change them into strengths. May God bless us all that we have the strength and perseverance to fulfill our mission in life. And with that, may we help to usher in the coming of Mashiach Tzikainu quickly and in our time. Thank you very much for coming. God bless. Shabbat Shalom.